Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Smith and today I'm going to give the fourth and hopefully my final speech for my uh, public speaking class at National University and it's going to be a persuasive speech. So we all know somebody that has been debilitated by some type of medical condition in their life, right? Everybody we know has some type of condition and as we get older, things happen, right? What if I told you that there is medicine readily available that grows straight out of the ground, you can grow it in your garden, but uh, it's not exactly legal in all the states in America. Right? So today I wanna to talk about medical marijuana and why I feel like we need to legalize it nationally federally to make it available for everybody so we're gonna go through a few different things we're gonna go over the safety of marijuana we're gonna go over um, the economic impact we're gonna go over addiction rates and also you know some of the racism behind first creating the laws so according to Amy Tennant Tickenden, excuse me, uh, in an article on Britannica.org, uh, around 1910, at the beginning of the Mexican Revolution, we had a sudden influx of immigrants. When they came over here, they brought over a tradition of recreational marijuana use. This caused 26 states to start creating their own laws to ban medical marijuana or marijuana in general. Fast forward 20 years, June 14, 1930, they created the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. Harry J. Anslinger was the first head commissioner of the new department. He was what you would consider racist there are things that he believed and to keep it mild we'll just say uh, one of his quotes was reefer makes the darkies think that they're as good as white people that's that's racist it's really bad mm -hmm. and you can know that a man that believes that is not trying to push forth any type of law with a good reason, okay. Um, Anslinger used news media and other propaganda such as the 1936 movie Reefer Madness to push forth the first federal law banning marijuana. That was the Marijuana Tax Act and it was enacted in 1937. That law stayed in effect until 1969 when it was decreed unconstitutional. A year later in 1970, they created the Controlled Substances Act. This, this new law classified marijuana as a Schedule I narcotic. What that means is that it's on the same level as cocaine, heroin, Methamphetamines, fentanyl, these are all drugs that are, uh, that are Schedule I narcotics. They have absolutely no medical benefit. That's what our government deems it, no medical benefit whatsoever. Since then, there has been no change to that law. The only laws that have changed have been state laws. Certain, certain states have came forth and said, okay, we want our people to be able to have access to this miracle drug, right? Wants everybody to feel good, get pain relief, stop shaking. Uh, the law federally is still that it's illegal and it hasn't changed even though there has been several studies that prove that it does have medical benefits. Cresco Labs lists several different medical conditions on their website. 
that you can benefit from medical marijuana use. Among those, you got mental disorders such as depression, anxiety, PTSD. You've got autoimmune diseases such as HIV and AIDS that can be treated. You've got cancer that can be treated, epilepsy. The, the list goes on and on. Marijuana can help manage all of the symptoms from these different conditions. And it's one of the only drugs out there that you can get relief from these without having a whole list of uh, other problems. Cancer.org states that there are, right now, two chemically clear medicines that are approved for use in the United States. They are formed after marijuana. Uh, there is a third one that they're working on right now. These drugs are used for anti-nausea, they're to treat pain. Uh, it, it really helps people that's got cancer survive. Really it does. According to Dr. Grinspoon, now Dr. Peter Grinspoon, he is a activist for cannabis. He's also a doctor and he is also an instructor at Harvard University. Uh, according to him in a 2020 article for Harvard Health blog, the most common use for medical marijuana is pain relief. Every, every year there's over 40,000 deaths from opioid overdose. Can anybody guess how many overdoses there have been from marijuana? Zero. 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 There are no medically documented cases of marijuana overdose. There are health risks to consuming marijuana, depending on how you consume it. If you smoke cannabis, all the health risks that go along with smoking a cigarette is there. There are other forms though. We have pills, we have uh, tinctures, we have edibles. There are other ways to consume marijuana. But <clears throat> there's never been an overdose or death or anything like that from it. In fact, Dr. Grimstrom points out to one study that says that in one state, once they legalize cannabis for medical use, over 2 million daily doses of opioid prescriptions dropped. The number went down by over 2 million doses a year, or daily doses a year. Um, once dispensaries opened, another 3.74 million dropped, which means that people were getting the help that they needed without using opioids to do so. So, maybe by helping us, we're also helping fix another crisis that we're in. Now onto the economic impact of legalization. Bill Fay uh, from debt.org broke down a few of the numbers. Uh, Oakland, California collected 1.4 million from medical dispensaries. That's almost 3% of all business taxes collected in that city. The state of Colorado collected 5 million. Oregon, 6.7 million, which it used to fund other state health benefits. Uh, as of today, marijuana is California's largest cash crop. That's beating out their wine production. That's a big deal. More to the point, almost every state that has allowed medical cannabis has seen revenues from taxes. They use those revenues to better your education, to fix the roadways. Um, there's a myriad of different things that the government can use that money for. Mm -hmm. After looking at all the laws that banned it, the medical uses, and the safety of marijuana versus prescription drugs and the economic impact, I hope that you all see why I think that we should federally legalize marijuana. I hope that you all go, write your senators, write your congressmen, vote green. Do everything that you can to progress this because our families and our loved ones rely on it.
Thank you all for being here, and this concludes my final speech.